Are you dealing with plantar fasciitis over years and nothing seems to help? Well, you're in luck because we are going to talk about three primary reasons why it's not going away. And of course, we're going to give you some excellent treatment so you can get rid of it. Now, the first issue we're going to talk about is your footwear and shoes. Typical footwear like this and shoes have a narrow toe box like this and also a elevated heel. This can cause a lot of issues on your plantar fascia. Now, when it comes to these types of shoes we interviewed podiatrist Ray McClanahan and he talks about how these shoes actually can restrict blood flow to your plantar fascia which can actually make it necrotic and die off. Can I show them Mike? I'm, I'm all excited. So it's not only the fact that the shoe is narrow but they're pointed and this is very typical for many shoes, a majority of them and if you look at your foot when you put your foot in one of these pointed shoes. I have my skeleton uh, footwear or socks on. It actually compresses and look at the bone of your great toe, the big toe. It actually gets pushed in and then the shoe actually comes up. So it dorsiflexes it and squishes it in, which actually reduces the circulation to the plantar fascia. And that's a big problem because without circulation, healing does not occur very well at all. So what you should do is look for shoes that are zero drop shoes is typically what they're called and have a wide toe box. Now there are many brands out there. They're all fine. Just pick which style you like. But keep in mind that some of them are very minimalist like this one. You can see it has a wider toe box, mm. but there's not much padding underneath it. If you feel comfortable wearing these shoes, that's perfectly fine. Do they have to get one with a hole in the bottom? Preferably you want one without a <laughs> hole because you got ripped off. Anyway, another option option this is still zero drop but as you can see there's much more cushioning so get what feels good for you just make sure it has a wide toe box zero drop that should help restore the blood supply to your plantar fascia and help that issue yeah, I really think like this shoe really or that one really shows that wide toe box. You know, a good option that uh, Dr. McClanahan does advocate, which I take advantage of, is the Crocs. They do have that wide space for your foot so your toes aren't getting pushed together. They're comfortable. You can wear them inside, outside. The only thing I don't wear them is in the wintertime when it's snowing. Oh, wow. But they're, they're great for uh, everyday use. Now, if you're new to this and don't want to spend a lot of money, there is a company called Witten. It's available on Amazon. This pair is only $45. It's inexpensive. That's what I tried at first. If you like it, want to buy more expensive brands, go right ahead. Yeah, you got some down there too. Yeah, some brand. <laughs> Now, in conjunction with getting wide toe box shoes, Dr. Ray McClanahan recommends for some people correct toes, toe spacers. He actually made these with a friend of his and sells them. The nice thing about these toe spacers is you can wear them with your shoes. Most other ones you can wear, but you have to be just resting. They're not active. These ones you can actually put on, put your socks over it in your shoe, and it'll help keep your toes in alignment. This is more for people that when they take off their shoes, they got a hard bunion and their toes are still smashed together, even without their shoes on. This can help spread them out equally, returning the blood flow to the plantar fascia. Right, and I wanna emphasize, you can put these on, you can custom to your foot, but you do need to have the wide toe box shoes and you can actually run with these if you happen to be one of those people who runs. So they're really quite functional and it's a good, uh, good invention by Dr. McClanahan. Now let's get into problem number two. Issue number two for most people with plantar fasciitis is tight calf muscles. You have two calf muscles per leg, and <laughs> oftentimes your footwear, like we talked about earlier, is a big problem because most shoes have elevated heels and a shorter forefoot. This can actually shorten the muscles of your calf, which leads oh. to your Achilles tendon, which will shorten your plantar fascia because this whole system is actually connected. Right, and if you happen to wear high heels or pumps or whatever they call them, that really puts their calf muscle and allows it to shorten throughout the day. So then you even need to do more stretching. So changing your shoes is the most important part, but we're going to show you some calf stretches because if it's been years of wearing these shoes, your calves are tight. Brad, you want to take it away? That's right. Now, I like to do my calf stretches with shoes on. You can do them with them off. I'm going to put my Crocs on, uh, and I would say 
shoes is better. You go up against a wall, you're going to bring your foot about. I'm going to stretch my left one about two feet away from the wall. It's going to depend on how tight you are and whatnot. You'll figure it out. Do not let your toe point out to the side. Let it point straight towards the wall. Now, he said there was two muscles in the calf group that were stretching. The first one is a gastronemius. Straighten the knee to get that muscle. Make sure the heel is down to the floor, straight knee, and then lean forward, and you will feel a stretch. I can feel that up in the upper area, just below the knee. We're gonna hold that 15 to 30 seconds, or you can rock on, pressure on, pressure off, for about 10 to 15 seconds. You'll get a feel for this after you do it for a while. Then, I usually bring my foot in, and then I'll bend my knee, Keep the heel flat, toe pointed forward, and then go down like this, and you'll feel the stretch in this lower area, getting the soleus muscle, which is important as well. Work that one, and of course, do both feet. Mike, you're laying down. Get, and we're gonna, we got work to do here. I'm taking a nap here, but seriously, stretching your calf is good actively, but what we don't think about is when we are sleeping mm. at night, most of the time when they're laying down, like my right foot here, you are in a plantar flex position, like this, which is actually shortening my calf muscle as well. That's so right. Some people with plantar fasciitis will get what is called a dorsal night splint. There are many brands. This one is a Mars, I believe Mars brand. So you simply put it on, like I have here, you can adjust how much tension is on it with this strap. It's not super aggressive. That's the good one about this splint. So you're not actually going to be stretching and pulling back. It's more to keep your foot in a neutral position. Position, position, <laughs> preventing the plantar flexion. Now, if you're new to this, when I put it on at night, when I've worn this before in the past, I'm fine. I'll wake up two hours later and my foot is super tight and I want to take it off. You're better off if you wake up during the middle of the night to use a bathroom or something. When you wake up and get back in the bed, put it on because you're better off waking up with your foot in this position versus this position. It'll make your plantar fasciitis not hurt as much in the morning. Right. There's a lot of different splints like this you can go through and browse, but you, you do like this one. I like the one that you can adjust and don't get it too tight, right? Yeah. Some Initially. Of them you can adjust more and really pull. You don't want to have a stretch all night. Just prevent it from going down. Slowly build up your tolerance over time. Maybe start with two hours the first night. If you can go to four, six, eight, over over time, that's good. Once your plantar fasciitis settles down, you don't have to wear this anymore. A good indicator that you should wear one of these is when you get out of bed and that first step is just painful and you're going like this. And then after a few minutes, it starts to stretch out and get better. That's a good indication you should have this and that first step will not be near so painful. Now the last problem most people have is actually their walking or gait pattern. It can irritate your plantar fasciitis. So typically with plantar fasciitis, most people are saying, oh, it hurts more in my heel region. And most people also walk with a straight knee and they impact directly on their heel, which is gonna shoot pain right into your plantar fascia. So a good option is to walk with soft knees. So typically what we're doing when we're walking with soft knees is I take a shorter step, I leave my knee bent, I land with more of a flat foot like this. Some people will even land with more of their forefoot and then let their heel come down as they swing their other leg through. When you're first starting to do this, do it in your house, do it barefoot, unless you happen to have the zero drop shoes, then that's fine. Most common shoes nowadays, those elevated heels make you wanna impact with the straight leg and heel first, but you try to do that barefoot, this is, this is rather <laughs> uncomfortable. Right, I agree 100% walking on hard floor, not carpeted, and you will feel it when you're barefoot, how much better it feels when you land with your forefoot first, the knee slightly bent. It's a cushion versus that impact. Now, it will take some time to get used to this over time because it feels quite <laughs> awkward if you've been walking however many years old you are with a heel strike pattern. So take your time. You're gonna end up taking shorter, quicker steps, but eventually it'll feel more normal. It took me a couple months, but I got used to it. All right, so this is quite simple. You simply need to have the wide toe box shoes. You stretch the calf muscle as well as changing your walking pattern. And this takes all takes time. It's just a matter of a few minutes a day. Easy with the shoes, the stretch, and the walking. It will come. Bob and Brad.